Hello, welcome back. We are going to start talking about characters now. This is going to be kind of a two part thing because characters are just a huge part of Dungeons and Dragons. So we're going to first talk about characters as a broad concept and then we're going to talk about our character sheets, which is what you need to play the game. Okay, so let's start out by talking about characters. What is a character? Well, basically, this is your avatar in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. You are this person when you play. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about who you want to be in the game. What does your character look like? What do they act like? Why are they traveling? When you think about these things, think small. It isn't any fun to play an all-powerful god. The fun is learning about your character and watching them grow. That's the huge important thing. So let's start with something simple. Maybe not so simple, but usually people have a pretty good idea about what they want their character to look like. What does your character look like? I'm going to be doing this in an example format. So as I talk, I'm going to build a character with you. You can feel free to pause and kind of take this time to think about the questions I'm asking you, write them down. So let's get back to my first question. What does your character look like? I want to make my character be a dwarf. Good starting point, right? That's really all you need. I want my character to be like this, right? Most dwarves are strong and stocky and they usually live in the mountains or where there are rocks. Uh, they aren't very tall, just like me. Uh, so she's short and has a bit of chin stubble because dwarves grow beards really easily, even the ladies. And she has dark hair and light colored eyes. So that's a great start for a character description. What does your character look like? Usually this, what do they look like, is going to include their race. Race in this game means more uh, what species they are. So could be human, dwarf, elf, um, orc, half orc, half human, tabaxi, uh, kinku, all sorts of races are available to you in this game. Now, the one thing you wanna do is use your resources. As we're going through this process, I want you to use, there is a PDF of the player's handbook on your flash drive use that, or use your Weapons and Warriors book that you have accessible to you. There are also other resources available like D&D um, &D Beyond, they're great for character building, and what else do you have on your resource sheet? There's also the basic player rule book in there as well, another PDF, and then later on we're going to look at those character sheets together. So again, we're just starting out with our simple questions here and getting our basis first. Okay, next thing you want to think about when you're thinking about your character, what do they act like? What's their personality? So my question would be, what is her personality? And feel free, you don't have to play, you know, who you are as a person. You can be a male dwarf noble and be really aristocratic and snotty. Or you could, you know, feel free to play whatever you want. Just whatever you want. More colors. But what is her personality? I like to think about how a dwarf would act. What are their natural characteristics when you think about that? What can you work with? That's their natural characteristics. They have a reputation for being stoic and stern. Do a little research on your character. Uh, there's a lot of information in the resources that I just told you about that you can kind of get a feel for what they would act like. And that's a really good place to start is basically what species you're playing and how they might act in the world. The next really big thing for me when I'm talking about my characters and making them, what are their flaws? Flaws are really important in this world because you can't have an all perfect being, right? Your character is not going to come into this world and just be like, Hey, I'm here. Look at me. I'm perfect. I'm a god. Uh, I have this really awesome weapon that kills everything in sight. That is not fun to play. It's not fun. 
and flaws make everything more fun. Sometimes I like to think about what my flaws are as a person. So one of my flaws is I'm really impatient. I want things to be done right now. So I could put that into my character. And it causes some really funny scenarios, right? So if my dwarf is running around being impatient all the time, she's probably going to get into some fights that she didn't mean to get into. Or she might, you know, cause unexpected consequences because she's rushing or she buys the wrong thing because she was too impatient to think about what she was buying. All of these things come from that one flaw. And if you have a variety of flaws across your campaign and your players, so much more fun. You can also think about flaws as being like maybe your character lost his thumb in the war or, you know, <laughs> so he doesn't have a thumb. Maybe think, think about what your character has and does and then what might make them funny. Maybe my dwarf is really super good natured because usually dwarves are, you know, kind of gruff but maybe she's super happy and outgoing and wants to talk to everybody and they don't know what to do with that because she's a dwarf and what. So things like that. If you, It's fun to take a character element that is a known fact, a known thing, and then flip it so that that makes their flaw. Flaws don't necessarily have to be a bad thing. But anyway, what is their flaw? My dwarf is going to be afraid of heights because she's used to living underground. Makes sense, right? This ties back to where she grew up and her history. It's fun to have these flaws and it makes the character more real and puts them into some very interesting situations like we just talked about. The next question you need to think about is how do they act? How do they act? This is in direct reference to their alignment. Now when we get to our character sheets, I'll point that out. Alignment means what, um, let me just show you what alignment means here. As you can see on this chart, there is lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, lawful neutral, true neutral, chaotic neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. So each column is either lawful, neutral, or chaotic, and each row is either good, neutral, or evil. This is really important when you're making your character and when you're playing with a party. So essentially, this, is de this determines how you play the game. So if I'm lawful good, but a party member is playing as chaotic evil, that's gonna be a mess. That, I mean, it can be done, but it can't be done easily. Meow. Who would be considered lawful good? This is someone who is always trying to follow the rules and has a strong moral compass. Alternatively, chaotic evil is someone who is bad and does bad things with no intention or reason behind their actions because they're chaotic, right? Usually for the first time out, it's a good idea to play true neutral. This way you can kind of grow along with your character and figure out how you see things working, how your character acts. The party can find out more about their characters as they play and no one is stuck in an alignment that doesn't fit with their character. Class for a character is considered more like a profession. Uh, so there are lots of different options for class and each one has variations to it. There's no one class that's better than another, it's just a preference of what you want to play for your game. So the question we need to ask about our character is, what class would fit with your character and how do you want to play? It's important to ask this big question because you want everything to be logical and work together. You know, Minarath would not probably be a wizard. Logically, she would probably be something strong like a fighter, monk, or barbarian. Or you could go with class being her flaw. Minarath is actually a warlock, and uh, because dwarves don't have magic naturally, uh, she gave away a priceless heirloom to receive magic. She's still a dwarf, though, and it doesn't come naturally to her, so it's always a struggle for her to do magic using in the game, right? 
So maybe you tell your DM that and they say, okay, Minarath uses magic, but she always does magic with a disadvantage roll, right? Something like that. As long as your story fits with your character, it'll be fine. You can read your resources, and we kind of went through this a little bit, that there's many, many ways that you can utilize your resources here. The last thing you need to think about, and maybe the most important, what is their name? I like to leave this for last because I feel like I know the character better and can give them a name that fits. I like to make my name somewhat accurate to their race. And in Dungeons and Dragons, each race has a, a different naming convention, which can be found in that player's handbook that PDF that you have on your resources. It, you can also use the Donjon website. It helps you to randomize names if you're feeling that. So the other things that you might use for fantasy names are D&D Beyond, and you can just kind of do an internet search. But like I said, I like to try and name my characters based on their background. So remember Minarath, Greybeak of uh, Skull Mountain? That would actually be a name that I would give this character because it fits with their background and their class and race, okay?